In this tutorial, we will learn about the basics of texture painting. We can create any kind of real-life texture through texture paint in Blender. But for someone who is new to this concept, this entire thing may look quite confusing. So to begin with, let's look at this high-level workflow. We need to first create a UV map for our model. This UV map will be then connected to a material, which gives us the final output. And a texture file has to be attached to this material. Now, texture paint essentially comes into picture right here, so the function of texture painting is to edit some texture. It could be a blank new texture, so the texture is created through texture painting from the scratch, or it could be an existing texture, which we modify through texture painting. So let us start with our dinosaur model. We need to first create a UV map, so select this object and open UV editor on another window or panel side by side. And on this side, we have to go to the edit mode. Then select all the vertices or faces, and from this UV menu, we have to unwrap it. Since UV editing is not the main subject of this tutorial, let's just use any option to create a simple UV map, which will be visible here. We can also verify it in the object data. We have our UV map listed here. Now, you can see some tabs or workspaces at the top of this window. We have one for UV editing, one for texture painting, and then one for shader. These workspaces are nothing different, we have the same setup, it is already split into two screens, for an easy workflow. We can use them, and keep our layout tab free for other stuff, like animation or camera view. So we have created the UV map, now we need to add a material for this model. So let's turn on the rendered view mode. Then go to the materials tab, and create a new material. In the base color, we have to select image texture. A texture file has to be then attached here. We can actually switch over to the shading workspace, it has got a shader editor ready for us. We can see here a principal BSDF, which is connected to an image texture. We have to either create a blank new texture file, or we can open an existing texture to edit the same. Let's go with new. We can change it to any name, whatever we like, so let's call it dino texture. Then, these numbers define the size or the resolution of the image. And we can turn off this alpha to save memory, since we don't need any transparency for this texture. Now, we should attach our UV right here. Since we have only one UV map, Blender will pick it up by default. But you can also assign it explicitly through a UV map node, and the UV map name has to be selected from this list. So we have our UV and the material ready, we can now go to the Texture Paint workspace. The screen is again divided into two panels. We have an image editor on the left-hand side, which we can also open from here. But instead of the view mode, we have to be in the paint mode, only then we'll get these paint tools here. And we have to ensure that we are editing the texture file called Dino Texture. Later we'll have to save this file separately. Then on this side, we simply have our viewport that we are all very much familiar with. But instead of the object mode, we are currently in the texture paint mode, that is the only difference. We get several tools that help us to paint while we're in this mode. We can change the brush color from here. Let us change it to a dark skin shade that will form the base color of our dinosaur. Then we have this drop down option, we have several mixing options here. It works like Photoshop layers, it's about how you want to mix the new strokes to the existing texture or the underneath layer. You can also change the brush size by changing this slider. These options are also present here in the image editor. Or you can also change them here in the properties panel under the active tool tab. While your mouse is here, you can also press the F key and move your mouse in the right or in the left to quickly change the brush size. Then click once to accept the new brush size. Now you can start painting on your object like this. It's actually fun to see how you can color an entire three-dimensional object, much like Microsoft Paint. And as you paint here, the same will be also visible on this image viewer. The UV map is superimposed on our texture, it can help us paint with a higher precision, but you can also disable it from here. You can paint directly on this texture image as well, and whatever you paint here, it will be added to our model real-time. Now let's say we want to add a base color for our model, in place of the black color. We can do that while creating a new texture file. In this color field, we can specify our preferred color. But since we did not do that, we can now do that using this fill tool. 
We can see that the brush color has changed to white, so let us pick up the brown color with the eyedropper. Then undo the previous steps, and click once, to fill it with the selected color. Our model will now get this same color everywhere. Then we'll again select the brush tool. And this time in the brush color, let us pick up a lighter tone, so that we can paint on the dark brown. We know that the underside color of any animal is usually a little lighter like this. Here you can do a better job with a stylus, instead of drawing with a mouse. Anyway, once the changes are made, remember that we have to save this texture. You can see a little star symbol here, it means the texture image is not saved. Even if we save the blend file, you'll notice the texture file does not get saved. So, we need to save it explicitly, somewhere on our machine. In the explorer, we can see that we have got two files, this is the blend file, and this is our texture file, you can also save it in some other location. Back to Blender, we can also change the brush strength from here. This helps us in creating something semi-transparent. We can apply this on some border areas, between the dark part and the light part. But painting is a very different kind of skill, and I am really bad in drawing, so we'll skip this and look at our result. Once the skin part is done, we have to create the eyes and the pupils for our dinosaur. So we'll pick up some off-white color and adjust the brush strength. In the next step, we need to also paint the teeth and the tongue. This is how it will look like after everything is done. We should ideally create a separate UV map and a separate texture for the tongue, but just for simplicity, we have created everything together, in the same texture file. And remember that we have to save this texture, irrespective of the blend file. This is not an awesome creation by any standard, we are just trying to learn the basics of texture paint. But we can still make it better, by adding some shader nodes. A texture image may not be sufficient on its own, we need to often manipulate it further through a shader setup like this. Let us make some room here. And we'll bring some noise factor, so let's add a noise texture or maybe a Voronoi texture, that will drive the noise pattern. We can change this to smooth F1. Then we need to add several other nodes here. There is nothing specific about these nodes, it depends on your requirement and on your taste. Here we are simply mixing the Voronoi texture with our image texture through a color mix node with overlay function. Then it is mixed with a musgrave texture through another overlay, and the final result goes to this base color. So the dinosaur will look like this. And for a better reflection of light from the skin, we can also customize the normal using this bump node. So let's connect this to the height input of the bump, and then connect normal to normal. We are done with this and the final result is here. We can also check it in the texture paint tab. So as I said earlier, this cannot be an example of some great job in texture paint. We only covered the basics in this tutorial on how to create a natural texture through texture paint in Blender. With more time invested and more skill applied here, you can get a far better output. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.